What's happening, my friends? It's Joel here, from Let's Read. Hope everyone's feeling good today. Um, I'm sitting here flapping on my stomach. Um, <laughs> my my uh, six-pack, rock-hard um, case of beer. Just playing a little Rocket League. Uh, I have uh, thus... Uh, 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 thus since probably done three recordings of this the first time was perfect literally perfect realized that my recording had stopped and was just set on preview and that was highly highly embarrassing for me as a um, premiere let's play -er, uh, that I am Right up there with the uh, Pewds and, and Mr. Mark plier. Um, but no, I'm just uh, dilly, dillying around. I got this new um, program called OBS, Open Broadcast System. Shout out to um, that creepy reading for showing me it. Uh, pretty sweet. You got some pretty decent settings as far as uh, what you can fiddle around with and still get a, uh, oh, I just totally ducked out of there. Ah, there you go. Thankfully, my, you know, my greatest ally when it comes to, uh, damn it, when it comes to winning a Rocket League game is my teammates. Because chances are I'm going to screw something up and I'm going to need those teammates to figure out my bullshit. Figure out my horse shit, because I'm terrible. Alright, here we go, here we go. This is the set. Oh, and I completely missed it. Okay, it's okay. Um, but no, I, t I, I, had, I figured I'd play like three games here, and uh, oops, that was really bad. Um, I almost could have totally screwed our team over there. Uh, I told you guys I would do like a little bit of a QA, and a uh, and now, I didn't have quite enough questions, uh, you know, sent in uh, from you guys, uh, because I don't think anyone uh, cares. <laughs> um, but I thought to uh, get the ball rolling here, <laughs> the ball rolling, um, I would do the random question generator. Sorry, I am not paying attention here. There we go. Up and over, baby. What's good? All right, first question. Are you a spender? Or a saver? Well, that's a terribly boring question. I would say I am both, um, because I work with a lot of women uh, where I work at, and a lot of them tend to hemorrhage uh, money, for lack of a better word, um, on different stuff. Dang, my nice shot. Um, clothes and that sort of thing. Me, I don't really. Uh, have a whole lot of things I buy. I mean, I like to, I like to think objectively. I got, uh, you know, I got my computer, uh, I got my mic and the various accessories for recording, um, which I'm always open to uh, criticism there on, on ways I can improve. So if, if you guys, you know, notice anything in my readings that, excuse me, that could use some uh, alter alterations. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, close. Close. Um, I'm always open to hearing, but yeah, I, uh, I don't really like to, not that I don't like to spend money, I just, you know, do you ever, like, you can't oh, no think problem. of anything to spend money on, per se, um, other than video games and food and dilly-dallying around, um, greatest money saver, uh, is to avoid having kids, that could help. Cats are. I have a cat. <laughs> He's a little less expensive than a kid. Um, Alright, so that was a terrible question. Moving on to the next one. What did I do? Alright, so we got. What are. So, oh, oh, I took Nice shot. Alright, next question. What are, are things that you shouldn't okay. say at a funeral? Um. Uh, 
Uh, has anyone seen Grandma? Where's she, where's she at? For this family reunion. Yeah, that's a bad one. Um, or what would it, would it be another good one? really boring. Why do we do this? Funerals make no sense. What's the point of just being sad around anybody? I feel like every funeral I've went to, I, I, I apologize for anybody who's actually had to go to a serious funeral before. I'm like sitting here talking about that. Um, but I feel like every funeral I've gone to um, in the past has always been for some like random great aunt or uncle that I've never met in my life. And uh, I see someone just sitting there bawling about it, and I just, I wonder to myself, I'm like, why, why would they invent this? Why, why would they ever create a place specifically so you could be sad about them being dead? Because, I mean, they're already dead, but then, you know, and you're sad about it, but you need, like, a formal, a formal opportunity to, to demonstrate that by, and wearing nice clothes, like... You would imagine that the person who had just died probably wouldn't even want people to come to that said said funeral. I can imagine all these all these questions would be probably ones everyone was already gearing up to ask me in the uh, comments section below. Um, probably not. Uh, oh no! What's he doing? Um, next question. That was terrible. Do you believe in luck? Um, damn straight. Because uh, it's not like leprechaun luck, I suppose. Uh, I believe in, you know, obviously I do a lot of paranormal things, so it would beg the question, well, well uh, let's read, do you believe in some spiritual things? And I would say, oh my god. <laughs> I would say right there I didn't have much luck. Um, damn. Um, we're gonna skip that question. That's, that, that's a, a roundabout question with no purpose. Um, here we go. Here we go, Nanny. Here we go, Nanny. Here we go. Yep, yep, yep. If you knew you only had 24 hours to live, what would you do? Huh. That is a tough one. Um, well, I definitely wouldn't go to work. I'd probably just binge uh, eat on every possible food near me all at one time. And then I would continue walking into the woods hopefully with a friend maybe and just keep walking until they had no idea where I was uh, until oh this is already up terrible 24 hours oh my god <laughs> I just keep walking until I couldn't walk anymore and then just sit and reflect. Oh, you know what I might actually do? I might actually uh, make a recording for you guys called My My Last 24 Hours. Keepy Pasta. And then, uh, no one would watch it. Alright. Hey, buddy. Nice. Alright, we're coming back. We're bringing it back this time. Another question. These are terrible. What was the last movie you saw? Okay, that's a good one. There's something I can actually talk about. I went and saw The Revenant um, with Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know if anybody else had seen it. Uh, let me know in the comments. But it was pretty freaking cool. Um, I don't, you know, obviously I don't want to spoiler it, but in case anybody's, uh, uh, you know, knows the general plot line, uh, something that would kind of give a description without spoiling it is it's about a uh, fur trapper oh my god it's a 
about a fur trapper who ends up pretty much getting left for dead in the middle of the woods and betrayed by his colleagues of sorts. I say, bruh. And, uh, he, and then the story of Mr. Leonardo DiCaprio making his way back from the edge of the grave to Shitskis. Back from all, near death to exacting his revenge upon the man who had betrayed him. So it is a revenge story, but uh, it's pretty freaking sweet. Um, it's very violent. Kind of a little scary violent, you know what I mean? Um, nice shot. But not quite as violent as the one I saw right before that, so I did see a lot of movies this holiday. Um, the Hateful Eight, uh, the Quentin Tarantino movie, which is kind of an issue, you know, it's obviously not the same piece, but it's kind of like an, you know, western uh, frontier style flick. And it's got Samuel L. Jackson, who plays a bounty hunter, Kurt Russell, who said, I, Kurt Russell's a badass, I, I gotta admit that. Like, I, I think he deserves to be in more movies. Um, just because he's, I love them in Big Trouble Little China. <laughs> just that, and he comes, he comes hard with that exact same badass attitude that you only really get with, with a pristine 80s movie feel and vibe. Um, and basically, they're trying to bring this, uh, this bandit into town to be hung, but there is a storm that hinders their... Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Nice shot. There's a storm, a blizzard, that's, you know, impeding their movement forward into town to, to exact justice upon this gang member and the story that unfolds from there. So it's pretty sweet. Um, it's, it's definitely Quentin Tarantino-esque. Uh, it's, uh, I've really never seen a director that I've loved to just like listen to their dialogue like something about every word that Quentin Tarantino says is just interesting as far as uh, it just keeps my attention come on now nice save um, oh, nice looked out there um, but then you know everything sort of builds and I, I love it builds the tension into a just a cacophony of of violence um, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's maybe senseless violence in some regard, but I think it's stylish, uh, needless to say. Nice shot. Um, you know, top Quentin Tarantino movies. I, I need to rewatch Kill Bill. That was, those movies were pretty freaking sweet. I think I only saw them once when they first came out, but that very much captivated my middle school brain spewing blood and anime and of course I'm sure like many of you I have uh, I went and saw I went and saw the Star Wars um, and that was you know it was good I mean I when you look back on Star Wars it was made in the set you know uh, 70s? Sorry if I'm wrong. Um, you know, and it's... You know, in comparison to other movies, it's not the greatest ever, but I think, you know, for what it was at its time, uh, was what... Um, oh, Jesus. Kind of intrigued people the most, captivated the imagination of children of that uh, era, you know, in the greatest degree, and the fact that it... Uh, that it just, it really allowed your mind to wander, and it created a universe that, Jesus, it created a universe that, uh, you know, allowed for the freedom of the audience to, to sort of, to mix with, obviously you've got all the crazy Star Wars lore that has uh, sort of descended, you got uh, Knights of the Old Republic, uh, and just that entire universe uh, to kind of mess with different species, um, obviously things that have come after that very similar like Mass Effect I think that's why I enjoyed Mass Effect so much because it had a story its story focused on 
you know, Captain Shepard and the gang and all that kind of stuff, but um, there was so much more around it, so much room for creativity and freedom that uh, I think that's the greatest trick in entertainment is allowing uh, the imagination of your viewer to just sort of go go wild and um, you know a lot of hype to live up to I think it's a hype I don't think I honestly feel like hype is just something that is great because we all want to you know we all want to worship something we all want to put all of our heart and love into something uh, and excitement but in reality it's it's hard to, you know, live up to that hype. But I think the cool part was about the most recent Star Wars is that it was a solid movie in general. It did have some pretty huge, um, you know, momentum moving forward as far as just, you know, your mind's kind of blown as far as the whole, that particular Star Wars story arc goes. Um, but I think looking back after the next subsequent, apparently, five, four you know, Star Wars movies comes out is that um, you can look at it as the entirety of a whole, you know, it, it seems that it's going to be, you know, as soon as you get done watching it, you kind of like, God, you know, damn it I, you know, I want to get right to the next one and uh, you know, you're like jealous of, of future generations born um, that have those movies available to them you know, right then and there kind of experience But yeah, so the Star Wars is definitely a, a must-see. Of course, you have the... You have to see it in theaters. I mean, if you, if you don't, you might as well just install your own movie theater in your house. Which is possible for everyone. I think everyone should be able to do that. Uh, sure. Next question. Uh, do you prefer to travel or stay close to home? I... Oh shit, I'm out of boost. Damn, oh, nice shot though. Um, I love to travel. Um, I honestly haven't been a lot of places. Um, from the United States, if anybody was wondering. Um, obviously my voice doesn't quite sound like my recordings. But, um... It, uh, you know, I like to travel. I like to go see places. Uh, the most recent place I was was, you know, just, you know, in the continental United States in Florida. I unfortunately haven't been out of the United States. Um, you know, obviously monetarily limited to... Oh, fart. Um, to where I can go. Um, and uh, I was in Colorado. That was beautiful. Uh, visiting a friend out there, um, I love their progressive attitude on things. <laughs> um, everybody was like super nice. So if you're from Colorado, thanks for being awesome. Uh, and keep it beautiful. I know that with weed being legalized, that I'm sure it's flooding with uh, everyone coming in. I think I saw a sticker where it was like, oh shit. I think I saw a sticker. It said, uh, you know, Kansas is nice this time of year. Is it, or, is it Kansas? I don't know. It shows you how much I know about, uh, geography. God. But, yeah, um, I'm excited, uh, to try to bring you guys more of these Let's Plays. Um, just listening to me ramble, ramble on for a while. I had a pretty good rambling earlier, um, just with some some topics of my actual life <laughs> but then after finding out that my recording got lost God, we're getting killed. after finding my recording got you know did not get saved I um, lost my wind did you ever just like you, you're so inspired at that moment and then you go back and look and you're like oh my lens was on the entire time or like oh I didn't press record well now I have no inspiration to do what I just did again <laughs> so um, but no I, I really enjoy doing these let's read because they're just like fun organic they're sort of therapeutic for me just to bull crap about whatever um, you know I'm always interested in hearing your questions if you know I had kind of just recently you know
put in a, the comment section of my last video. Jesus, guys. Trick is to blame your teammates. Always blame your teammates. I had a guy last game who legitimately, uh, right from the get-go, we let a goal go in. Just nobody was paying attention to the goal went in, and he just decided to play for the other team. And that makes it a lot of fun. Uh, uh, so... What was it even saying? A lot of Let's Plays. Uh, I know they're more just kind of be, you know, vlogs for me to sort of just BS about anything, change it up from the creepy pastas. Can't be scared all the time. <laughs> can't, can't be terrified. But, you know, anybody who watched the... Uh, I gotta blame myself for this match because I'm not helping them at goal at all. At least no one's yelled at me yet. That's one good thing. Go. Most games getting screamed at by some person who's taking Rocket League just a, li just a little too seriously. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope to do more Let's Plays uh, kind of pertaining to like new horror games. So like, if you guys know any like new horror games that you'd want me to play, um, I think with this open broadcast system or open broadcast uh, software. It's pretty sweet because I can just kind of press record and go, and I got and uh, got my mic hooked up directly, so that's all synced up, so I don't have to worry about... Oh my god. Getting pooped on. Forfeit? Never. Never forfeit. Oh, who recognizes this song in the background? Tycho, anybody? I love Tycho. I love just ambient trip hop, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of my music I use in my games. There's a shot. There we go. <laughs> um, a lot of music I use in my uh, videos is uh, dark ambient stuff. You know, which you know obviously complements the readings very well for anybody who's doing narrating. Um, if you're kind of like getting, if you're new to narration, um, you know, obviously you want to find somebody who's a royalty free. Um, nice. Okay, we'll come back. Making a comeback. Bruh. Um, looking for some royalty free narration. I'm gonna I'm gonna put an annotation or an, and a link in the description for two of my favorite um, musical artists that I have. It's uh, or that I've been using very frequently, and I can't thank them enough, is uh, Abyss Me. Jeez. Uh, Abyss Me um, is one. He's, he's, me and him, you know, I've been communicating directly for quite a while, and he's a super nice guy, um, an awesome musical composer. Uh, I'll leave a link to his page. Um, and then, uh, obviously, you've seen some of my more recent ones, uh, is uh, Coag Music, um, which... He, uh, he and Abyssmi are both very prolific in like the amount of content that they can create in uh, a short period of time, you know. And obviously, they love what they do. That's their their goals um, here on YouTube is to you know entertain people and with their music. And I can't say I'm uh, any more thankful because uh, otherwise, I feel like my dry readings would. <laughs> You probably hear all my snips and snaps and my uh, tongue clacking around. And uh, some people are into that. I don't know the ASMR community and stuff. Um, I, I remember when I first actually started, uh, people said that I should think oh, I'm getting we are getting dumped on. People said I should you know should try the ASMR route, and I do have some ASMR videos on there, um, but I just uh, kind of got into the narration thing and stuck with that. Um, you know, I don't watch a lot of ASMR things, but I can definitely appreciate just any, you know, anything can be as ASMR for someone that just causes them a sense of relaxation and uh, enjoyment out of, you know, some some audible stimulation uh, with headphones. And I kind of try to add some nuances uh, here and there in my uh, 
recordings that you may only be able to hear with headphones uh, for those people that you know have come from the ASMR community. I try to put some ASMR tags in my videos uh, to sort of draw on that crowd because I think um, there is an appeal to listening to someone speak for a little while, uh, especially in a nice, calm voice. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Alright, next question. Do you have any vacation plans coming up? No. But So that's exciting. No, but I do um, hope here to move by summertime, and that's really tentative because I'm also very leery about doing it because I'd probably be doing it alone. But I was hoping to move out to California. Um, and maybe, in, you know, while running the YouTube page, pursue some avenues of voice acting. I don't know where to go about that, if that's just like L.A. area, Silicon Valley, something of that nature. If, you, if anybody's familiar with that or has any suggestions or connections out there, I would be more than happy to, you know, hear that, hear you out. Um, because I know that's probably one of the hardest things. Uh, getting started is just actually getting started, getting an agent, uh, all that kind of stuff. And um, but uh, shit, that didn't help at all. Um, but yeah, you know, and I think uh, just getting away from fart. No, no, Scooby, 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 no! Nice. I'm out of boost. Get out of here, joke, Joker. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Should I should I go to California? Should I pursue the dream? I think it'd be so much fun to be in like, uh, uh, just cartoons. I'd like you know, be like one of the dubs on like anime mo shows or something like that, and do because I guess they do a lot of translations and dubs and stuff that they're apparently always looking for people for. Um, but that would be oh my god, I totally. Sorry, squad. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, uh, they're trying to get in my head. You ain't getting my head, dog. Um, I don't know if you guys have any, like, favorite animes or anything like that. I love uh, one of my favorite ones. Obviously, you know, I love Dragon Ball Z and things like that growing up. But one that I didn't discover until, you know, when I was later in college um, was one called Death Note, which I'm sure everyone's very familiar with. Uh, it's uh, about these, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's about these demon-type entities who exist in sort of a celestial plane, a uh, spiritual plane of sorts, and uh, they, uh, oh, come on, come on, come on. Where's my teammates? Jesus, guys. There you go. Nice shot. Kind of. Um, but anyways, they they write the they write people's names here on Earth into uh, a a book or their death note, and then uh, nice shot it right back for us. Oh my God! Um, they write it in their in the book in the death note, and then essentially it extends their life. Um, Jesus Christ. That was so bad. Um, and then, uh, basically, once in a while they get bored, so they drop their book into, like, the the realm of Earth Dwellers. And um, this one kid who's in high school, he ends up finding the book and then kind of discovering that he can cause people's deaths by writing their names in the book uh, through various means. And it's kind of just like an unfolding. It, it, I guess it sort of pans out like a tragedy. God, we are bad. I am bad. Um, but it's it's definitely a pretty awesome show. Like it's it's like a, I think it's only like twenty seven episodes, maybe thirty seven. I forget. But uh, it's uh, definitely worth watching. I've never really watched an anime where I'm on the edge of my seat throughout the entire experience.
Come on, I set you guys up. Where are you at, bruh? <laughs> Getting them destroyed. Nice save. Everybody's getting smooshed. Get out of the Come on now. There we go. Woo! Just gotta freaking take it in your own hands here. <laughs> Usually I end up screwing it up when I get a breakaway. What celebrity do you like to follow? That is a good question. I've never really been into the uh, celebrity worship culture, I guess, uh, or you know, getting too excited about them. Um, but I do like comedians. I think comedians are probably my favorite uh, type of people. Um, you know, obviously, I think stand-up comedy is one of my favorites. Uh, oh, shit. Um, forms of comedy. You know, obviously, I have shows and stuff like you know Tim and Eric or something like that, or skit comedy shows. Um, but I love like Louis C.K. Come on, where are you guys at? Where? What? What? What in the world? Um, like Louis C.K., uh, Bill Burr are hilarious, unbelievable hilarious. Uh, Uh, also in the Revenant, I don't know if you guys, if if you had seen it or seen the performance of uh, Tom Hardy, it was incredible in that movie. Like he just, he just, as far as his ability, he's really impressed me with just how he can create so many different characters and make them seem so realistic. Like I feel like every time I watch him, like he's playing something new. Jesus, I suck so bad. Um, you know, I mean, obviously he played Bane, uh, um, he, you know, he was in Inception, uh, where I think he kind of got his start, but, um, oh my god, <laughs> just racking up the points on us. Inception, he got his start, and, uh, that was, you know, obviously a, a, a decent performance, but you didn't realize, like, the range and the ability that he actually has. Um, you got people like uh, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, who's uh, you know, a heavily talent, highly talented uh, method actor, um, you know, who really goes in depth with his roles. And I'm always super impressed with just what some actors can do. Even a guy like Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio, even though he's a fantastic actor, when you watch him, you see his mannerisms and the and the way that he sort of presents a character is very similar to to just the way you've seen Leo before. Like when you watch the movie, you're gonna get the Leo mannerisms where he, if he's trying to get you to understand something, he squints and and points his uh, uh, you know points his fingers at his eyeballs like, don't you get it? Don't you get it? Or something like that. Um, nice shot, bro. Um, and, uh, but I'm so impressed when a person, you know, an actor, can make, can convince me that he's an incredibly different individual, you know, completely on screen. That's what's, like, most impressive to me. So yeah, if you haven't seen a Remnant, go check that out. <laughs> I love watching people argue with each other on here. No, that just helped them so much. Thank you. Let's practice. 
Uh, sometimes I wish I, you know, I'm sure everybody's used to a let's read name by now, but sometimes I think, like, should I have picked a, a different, a different uh, username or, you know what I mean, to, to get more attention, like, Space Spectre. <laughs> How do you guys feel about Space Spectre? Should I change it? At 22,000 subs, just change my name abruptly. I guess people have done it in the past. Well, God. Man Bear Pig, that's a pretty good name. That's all I'll change it to. Man Bear Pig. Oh, and he's, he's a shit talker, ain't he? Would you rather have to sit all day or stand all day? I guess stand all day because most likely I would, uh, Oh, wait, standing would suck. I guess sit, because that's what I pretty much do anyways, just sit around. Uh, not at work, but uh, in life. I'm a professional sitter. Sitter-upper. Okay. We go, good clear. Good clear. Good clear, yeah. Um, that's a stupid question. Anyways. Oh wow. Shit. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, okay. When did you... Fuck, I'm not paying attention. Oh, they're gonna hate me. Where did you grow up? Next question. Um, would you rather not be able to use your hands or not be able to walk? <sighs> yeah, probably not be able to walk. Because, um, I don't know, just not being able to use your hands would be just so terrible. I guess, because it's like, I mean, you still have your hands, you know? Um, and this is really generating some in-depth dialogue here, guys. Make sure you ask all these questions on, your, on a first date. <laughs> Would you rather not have any... Damn it. Damn it! <laughs> oh my god. Alright, do you read reviews about a movie before deciding? Alright. Actually, I would suggest not ever reading a review for a movie because, for me, I don't know what it is, but just, like, hearing someone else's quirks about it, uh, aside from their praises, um, really just... Oh, my God. Come on, money. Where you at, money? Where you at, money? Jesus. Um, really just kind of ruins it for me. Kind of, like, influences my thoughts where I'm, like paying too much attention to their negative, you know, ideas rather than just appreciating it for what it really is. There we go. Making a comeback. You're not real. Man, bear. You're not real, man, bear, pig. Come on, bro. <laughs> Shoot. Alright, we got a minute to win it. Come on, come on. Oh, what are you doing, dude? Alright, it's all good. Holy crap, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Uh, that's the worst when you got a shot, like, all freaking lined up. And, yes, screw it. 
What am I even doing? I get so disoriented in this game sometimes. Come on, clear it, clear it, clear it. What do you... Oh my god, just clear it. <laughs> Alright. What are you doing? What are you just sitting there juggling it for? I'm... A, oh my god. Oh, that was so bad. That was literally... Uh, well, that's a disappointing ending. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna play one more. We're gonna play one more. We're gonna get one more. Okay. If you became president, what is the first thing you would do? Now, this is kind of a serious question. I think if I became president, I would probably uh, end the Federal Reserve. Um, and then get probably assassinated uh, 10 seconds before I actually sign that bill. Because the Federal Reserve is not a good thing. It's a centralized banking system uh, privately owned by individuals who are not the government or the people of the United States and uh, nobody really benefits from it other than and and it's like they can decide what our interest rates are at all times they can decide what the debt is uh, I actually don't have any idea what it does but um, I think if the bank was not uh, if we didn't have you know centralized banks I think our economy would be a little bit of a little bit uh, better of a spot there but hell I don't know my perception in this world is everything is pretty much just chosen uh, ahead of time by individuals. Wars, civil wars, at least within the 20th and 21st century, everything's pretty much chosen at this point, which I can't imagine what it's going to be like here in the future. Can't even imagine. One exciting piece of news is... Uh, that uh, Caltech had announced that there sh actually may be a ninth planet, um, which, you know, as you're all probably familiar, that Jupiter is no longer a planet, but there's some sort of physical um, celestial body out there that they perceive orbit. Yeah, I saw this on Reddit, <laughs> so I do a lot of Redditing. Um, even though I hate Reddit most of the time, uh, that uh, has some sort of 20,000 year ellip, you know, uh, orbit, and um, it's uh, affecting other planets in our solar system to uh, causing their, you know, orbits, not necessarily to be out of uh, their normal orbit, but uh, the only explanation as to why they orbit the way they do, you know, within the laws of physics, would have to be that there's some sort of unknown force uh, that would have to be, you know, between the size of Earth and Neptune, maybe five times the size of Earth, causing those uh, physical, I guess, perturbations or whatever you want to call them, masturbation, something like that. Um, and uh, so that'd be exciting in the next year or so, pretty big 21st century breakthrough. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, if it was uh, Pluto 2, they could call it uh, Tudo. What are you talking about luck? Planned. Panned. It was panned. Everyone's always so butthurt when we play this game. They're always so angry about Rocket League. Granted, I get angry, but I like it's uh, kind of pointless to sit there and just type out your frustrations all the time. <laughs> you are not good, even though you are winning. Hoven, shit. What do you guys think? Do you think there's a 
planet out there waiting for us to be discovered. You always see those like a Nibiru, like I'm a big conspiracy kind of guy and stuff like that. And I watch a lot of, you know, talks or whatever. Uh, not TED Talks, but just general uh, podcasts or whatever. Not podcasts, but just radio talk shows um, that are all about conspiracy and things like that. And I oftentimes hear about Planet X and how its orbit or whatever is 3,600 years, and then they, you know, talk about historical, historically how um, uh, previous... Uh, Yo, Alton, you gotta go to the ball! Oh, oh man, they're pigs. That was a good save. It's so funny, everybody <laughs> gets so angry when I play this game. Oh my god, come on, come on, it's you, baby. You, whoever you are, that's you. Alright, we got 30 seconds. Oh my god, no, no, no! <laughs> yeah, take it in. Um. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! <laughs> oh, they messed up, they messed up! Oh, one second left. Oh, oh, <laughs> very close. Um, can't buy a goal. Lel, <laughs> Apu won't take up. Apu, practice up, kid. Be nice, fellas. Be nice, fellas. Um, <laughs> shit. Oh god, I hope I didn't press shift and stop this recording. Uh, anyways, um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to do more Let's Plays here in the future of different horror games and just different stuff, just for fun, you know what I mean? Uh, I know you guys love the, the narrations and recordings, paranormals, true stories, and I can't thank everyone enough who's participated in that. Because, um, you know, if you're an up-and-coming narrator, be sure to message me because I would love to have you on. Uh, it makes my life easier, it gets your name out there, and I think it adds a lot of variation to the page, so, um, yeah, I shall chat with you guys in the future, and this is Let's Read, signing off. Um, that creepy reading for showing me it, uh, pretty sweet, you got some pretty decent settings as far as, uh, what you can fiddle around with, and still get a, uh, oh, I just totally ducked out of there. Ah, there you go. Thankfully, my, you know, my greatest ally when it comes to, uh, damn it, when it comes to winning a Rocket League game is my teammates. Because chances are I'm going to screw something up and I'm going to need those teammates to figure out my bullshit. Figure out my horse shit, because I'm terrible. Alright, here we go, here we go. This is the set. Oh, and I completely missed it. Okay, it's okay. Um, but no, I, t I, I, had, I figured I'd play like three games here, and uh, oops, that was really bad. Um, I almost could have totally screwed our team over there. Uh, I told you guys I would do like a little bit of a QA, and a uh, and now, I didn't have quite enough questions, uh, you know, sent in uh, from you guys, uh, because I don't think anyone uh, cares. <laughs> um, but I thought to uh, get the... Not that I don't like to spend money, I just, you know, you ever, like, you can't oh, no think problem, of anything to spend money on, per se. Um, other than video games and food and dilly-dallying around. Um, greatest money saver uh, is to avoid having kids. That could help. Um, cats are... I have a cat. <laughs> He's a little less expensive than a kid. Um, Alright, so that was a terrible question. Moving on to the next one. What do I do? Alright, so we got... What are... So, oh. Oh, I took 
Nice shot. All right, next question. What are, are things that you shouldn't say at a funeral? Um, uh, has anyone seen Grandma? Where's she, where's she at? For this family reunion. That's a bad one. Um, or what would, would it be another good one? Really boring ball rolling here. <laughs> the ball rolling. Um, I would do the random question generator. Sorry, I am not paying attention here. There we go. Up and over, baby. What's good? All right. First question: Are you a spender or a saver? Well, that's a terribly boring question. I would say I am both um, because I work with a lot of women. Uh, where I work at, and a lot of them tend to hemorrhage uh, money, for lack of a better word, um, on different stuff. Dang, nice shot. Um, clothes and that sort of thing. Me, I don't really uh, have a whole lot of things I buy. I mean, I like to, I like to think objectively. I got, uh, you know, I got my computer, uh, I got my mic and the various accessories for recording. Um, which I'm always open to uh, criticism there on, on ways I can improve. So if, if you guys, you know, notice anything in my readings that, excuse me, that could use some uh, alter alterations. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, close. Close. Um, I'm always open to hearing. But, yeah, I, uh, I don't really like, why do we do this? Funerals make no sense. What's the point of just being sad around anybody? I feel like every funeral I've went to, I, I, I apologize for anybody who's actually had to go to a serious funeral before. I'm like sitting here talking about that. Um, but I feel like every funeral I've gone to um, in the past has always been for some like random great aunt or uncle that I've never met in my life. And uh, I see someone just sitting there bawling about it, and I just... I wonder to myself, I'm like, why Why would they invent this? Why, why would they ever create a place specifically so you could be sad about them being dead? Because, I mean, they're already dead, but then, you know, and you're sad about it, but you need, like, a formal a formal opportunity to, to demonstrate that by, and wearing nice clothes. Like, you would imagine that the person who had just died probably wouldn't even want people to come to that said said funeral. I can imagine all these all these questions would be probably ones everyone was already gearing up to ask me in the uh, comment section below. Um, probably not. Uh, oh no! <laughs> What's happening, my friends? It's Joel here from Let's Read. Hope everyone's feeling good today. Um, I'm sitting here flapping on my stomach. Um, <laughs> my my uh, six pack, rock hard, um, case of beer. Just playing a little Rocket League. Uh, I have uh, thus uh, uh, thus since probably done three recordings of this. The first time was perfect, literally perfect. Realized that my recording had stopped and was just set on preview. And that was highly, highly embarrassing for me as a um, premiere Let's Play-er uh, that I am. Right up there with uh, Pewds and, and Mr. Mark Plier. Um, but no, I'm just uh, dilly, dillying around. I got this new um, program called OBS, Open Broadcast System. Shout out to uh, 